Steve has asked me to tell my story. Uh, my story is that I am a pediatric dentist. I've been involved in public health for, um, for uh, as long as I've had a career in dentistry. As soon as I got out of dental school, uh, I became the director of a free clinic for underprivileged children uh, for the city of Bangor, Maine. I was the city dentist uh, for 32 years and I treated teeth uh, in children in a conventional way uh, and uh, uh, doing stainless steel crowns and composite restorations mostly. And um, we had fluoride mouth rinse programs and we had uh, puppet shows and millions of yards of floss and uh, we tried to uh, tried to arrest tooth decay that way. We tried to stop tooth decay from growing in our community. It was, uh, when I first entered in this community, um, I met people who were in their 20s who told me that their graduation present from high school was a set of dentures. And that was the community standard. Uh, I think that was the standard graduation present within that community when I moved into it in 1974. Um, so uh, then I retired after 32 years of treating teeth in conventional ways and I came to realize that uh, I really hadn't even put a dent in, in the amount of tooth decay in that community even though I had fluoridated the community. I was responsible for fluoridating that community and many other communities in Maine. And uh, starting uh, toothbrush programs and fluoride mouth rinse programs and you name it, we had it. Uh, we were in 14 different uh, elementary and high schools and daycare centers uh, for 32 years. Um, and again, I don't really think I put much of a dent uh, in, 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 the, in the carries rate in that community. So then I thought I'd retire and come to Oregon, but uh, when I came to Oregon, I found myself being approached by people saying, hey, you know how to run public health clinics. So long story short, short I ended up opening three federally qualified health center dental clinics in frontier Oregon, not rural Oregon. It was so uh, uh, far out uh, where I was in Oregon that it's called the frontier, federally qualified as a frontier area. There's less than one half of a person per square mile in Wheeler County, Oregon, where I set up three federally qualified health centers. Um, I saw so much decay there that I didn't quite know what to do. Uh, how was I going to eliminate uh, the, the problem uh, by conventional means? Well, it wasn't going to be possible. So uh, we centered our, our uh, federally qualified health centers in the schoolyards. So they're school-based health centers. And uh, I appealed to the community members and to the parents in the community uh, to allow me to go into the schools and grab their children from the classrooms and treat their decay. It was at that time that a colleague uh, with whom I was working uh, also a pediatric dentist like myself, introduced me to silver diamine fluoride. So I started using silver diamine fluoride to see if indeed I could arrest decay, and I found that I could. And I was applying silver diamine fluoride, 38% silver diamine fluoride, and fluoride varnish on teeth, and watching the brown decay turn black and stop. And I said, wow, I'm stopping decay. This is quite remarkable. But I've got to be able to do more than that because I had frank cavitation. I had cavities that although the decay was arrested at the, uh, on the cavity walls and at the floor of that lesion, there was still cavitation into which food was going. So uh, I, I, I wanted to stop the food from getting compressed into that cavitation. So I, I said, well, huh. I wonder if I could apply something on top of this. And it came to my uh, 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 awareness that perhaps glass ionomer would work because I knew glass ionomer released fluoride and maybe a release of fluoride would work synergistically with the silver diamine fluoride. Well, it was about that time that I met Steve Duffin and Steve introduced me to silver nitrate. Well, he kind of reintroduced me to silver nitrate because my dad had treated teeth in, in, in my mouth with silver nitrate back in the 50s. 
He treated uh, uh, some teeth that uh, where the decay was arrested. In fact, I had these little black spots in between my teeth where my father did that when I was probably eight or nine years old, and those teeth have never had to be restored. And he was using the very same brown bottle that Steve gave me the first time I met him. Steve gave me this bottle. I looked at it and I said, oh my gosh, that's the same bottle my father had on a shelf in his dental office in 1950. So I said, well, all right, I'll try it. So <clears throat> I started using 50%, uh, and I'll emphasize that again, 50%, not 25% silver nitrate, and uh, found it to be just as effective as 38% uh, silver diamine fluoride, and it was more readily available. I didn't have to get it from Japan. There were people who were criticizing me because I was getting the silver diamine fluoride from Japan, telling me that that was illegal. Uh, I appealed to the FDA to go ahead and put me in jail. They chose not to arrest me, therefore it wasn't illegal. So that was all a bunch of smoke and mirrors. Didn't matter. I had something that was less expensive and more readily available. 50% silver nitrate directly available from Gordon Labs in Upper Darby, PA. So I started getting that and using it and putting glass ionomer on top of it. Now remember, glass ionomer is hydrophilic. Composite is hydrophobic. Placing glass ionomers has to be done in the presence of water or the glass ionomer will not polymerize. It's a very important point. So here I am drying saliva, isolating the tooth, drying the saliva out of the decay. So think of the decay in dentin as being a sponge. That sponge is saturated with saliva. Now we're going to isolate the tooth and with air we're going to dry the saliva. We're going to dry the sponge. Let's resaturate the sponge. Fully saturate it. Let it soak, soak it in. What is soaking in? 50% of what is soaking in is silver ions. The other 50% is H2O, which is needed for the polymerization of the glass ionomer. So I use a glass ionomer that I am very specific about this. I have used resin modified glass ionomers. I have used all kinds of different products, different kinds of glass ionomers. The product that I found that would bond without excavation of decay to the saturated, decayed dentin was Fuji 2. Light cure. Why light cure? Because I'm a pediatric dentist. I don't have time. I trade children their good behavior for my speed. I don't have time to screw around. So I use something that works fast and that bonds. What works fast and bonds is Fuji 2. Have I tried other glass ionomers? You bet. Have I tried my resume? I've tried them all. If you out there would like to try something else, have at it. But I bet you anything I've already used it and I bet you anything it doesn't work. This is what works. So I put it in and I smush it and after I smushed it with a gloved thumb or finger or whatever, I smush it, I wet it first. So it smushes down, doesn't adhere to the glove. I smush it, it's that simple. Wonderful instrument, it's always with me. Don't have to go to a kit for it, it's right on my hand. I smush it, then I take any bonding agent. I happen to use Excite because that's what I use for my composite restorations. And I take a fuzzy tip applicator and I put that on there and then I light cure it. Now remember, Fuji 2 is both light cure and sets on its own. So it's dual cure, okay? Fuji tells us we need a coating over Fuji 2 for 24 to 48 hours because that's how long the self-curing polymerization takes. Even if you light cure it, it still takes 24 to 48 hours to fully polymerize. We need to protect it from the saliva for 24 to 48 hours. The best way to protect it is with a bonding agent. Can we use other things? Sure. Fuji has a product called Fujico. I don't use Fujico. You know why? 
because it's sticky. I don't want anything sticky. I want everything to be smooth and, and like, like oily. I want it to be slick. So when I put it on there, it's slick. It doesn't stick to anything. Why don't I want it to be sticky? Because I don't want to pull it out. I'm not using phosphoric acid. I'm not bonding. I'm using what natural bonding that glass ionomer has for it to stick. Polymerize it with the light, coat the whole thing with fluoride varnish. Why coat it with fluoride varnish? You just sealed silver nitrate inside a, 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 a tooth with glass ionomer that is releasing through its dissolution. Remember, glass ionomers don't wear, they dissolve. They dissolve in saliva over time. As it dissolves, it releases the fluoride. So the fluoride is working with the silver nitrate to arrest the decay. Why do I need fluoride varnish to cover over it? Because silver nitrate tastes terrible. If you put it in your mouth, I'm sure you will gag. So I don't want the child to taste any additional silver nitrate that might be in and around the tooth or on the gum tissue or whatever, and I'm done kid walks out. He says, yeah, tastes kind of like bubble gum. Thanks, Dr. John. Out the door. So the, why do I do this? I do this because I make the assumption that 99% of the kids I see in public health, I'm never going to see again. It's no different me working in frontier Oregon than me being dropped into sub-Saharan Africa from a helicopter. I'm going to treat those children once and then I'm going to leave because I don't live in sub-Saharan Africa and I'm never going to see them again. So I have to do as much as I can in one appointment. What is that appointment? The exam appointment? Yes. You mean you're going to do definitive treatment and treat every single tooth in the mouth at the exam appointment? But you need to take x-rays and you need to apply fluoride and you need to do a treatment plan. Yeah, I'll do all those things. That's real fast. And I'm going to treat every single tooth in their mouth. Now, how about the kid that you know is going to come back or the kid that's well behaved enough to get a shot and all of that stuff? Well, that's all fine and good. Are we talking about a patient that's got one caries? I don't treat patients like that. Do you? Well, maybe you do. Then that's your world. My world is seeing patients who have caries in every single quadrant. So should I do what I learned in dental school, treat one quadrant at a time. Well, if I treat one quadrant and then I have to say, well, Mrs. Smith, I'm not able to treat the second quadrant for four weeks or maybe six weeks because that's how far we are out. And she goes, well, Dr. John, we can't come in in six weeks. Our family's going on vacation. Oh gosh, then it's going to be 12 weeks before I get to quadrant number two. How about quadrant number three and quadrant number four? Those teeth are continuing to decay and we're going to lose those teeth. So what do I do? I treat all the teeth at once. I treat them at once and put the dang fire out. Because I don't really believe in the standard of care that we have of treating one tooth or even one quadrant at a time. You know, let me throw this out at you hypothetically. I don't know if you've ever been involved with Mission of Mercy, but let's do a Mission of Mercy together, okay? And we'll go to your whatever state you're from, your state now society, and you got this Mission of Mercy thing going, and you got all these chairs lined up, and all these people are going to, homeless people, and people that really need our care. And we got all these dentists that want to, want to really do some good, and they're going to treat one tooth at a time. So how about if I come in and bust the party? How about if I set up a chair over here and I'm going to put up a sign and I'm just going to say, would you like to have one tooth at a time treated or would you like to have all the teeth that need to be treated in your mouth treated now in one appointment painlessly without needles and without drills? Well, those people are going to wait in line and be treated by you over there in conventional means and then they're going to look over here and they're going to be running out of time and they're going to say, hey, I'll try this. Which is the best way for us to treat people in need? One tooth at a time? One quadrant at a time? One injection? One drill at a time? Or treat them all at once and put the fire out? And then later, if there's time, if the behavior of the child allows, if they have enough money, we can go back to conventional means. So I'm not taking anything out of my toolkit. I will show you some of the very best stainless steel crowns you've ever seen because I've done 40 years of the dang things. I can do them impeccably and I can do composites impeccably. 
I'm just adding something to the toolkit. I'm adding silver nitrate, which was there in the first place, but taken out when? In 1950. Why? Because we thought if we fluoridated communities, we would eradicate tooth decay from one end of this country to the other. And you know what? We didn't. It didn't work. Not that fluoridating communities is a bad thing. Maybe it's a good thing. But I know that it doesn't take care of the caries crisis that is inherently there then and even more so now. So we need something more. And that extra thing is something that was there originally that we once took out, open the toolkit, put it back in, end of story.